as an author, when when did you what propelled you to get the writing book? Was there a certain event? Uh, did uh, has it always been a part of you, um, uh, or is this something that just came up recently? I would just like to find out a little bit more about that. Yeah, I, I like the Q&A part. Ask all the questions you want. And, and I want to also say thank you to those who joined Sunday afternoons, a very busy time. I, I was telling Stefania earlier, I've had church. I had another interview. I'm just washing and stuff. So <laughs> I know that uh, I, I appreciate you, your time and effort in, in being here. I, uh, I like to say, and it's true, that I was, I was born a writer. Later, I became, you know, a mother. Later, I became a dentist. Later, I became a speaker, but I was born a writer. I I can't. It's the air I breathe. That's my passion. And from the time I was a kid, you know, I was writing poems and short stories and and doodling and, and just, you know, back in the day when you weren't carrying a tablet or a digital device everywhere. I, I would get a thought and write it on a napkin at a restaurant and then, ooh, post-it notes came. So it just got better and better. And now I can record or, or write anywhere. But that is the one thing that I, you know, family aside and my faith, of course, that's the thing that I can't live live without. I would do it for free. I have done it for free. I don't want to do it for free again, but <laughs> I, I would not give up writing. And that's awesome. And uh, so when you wrote your first book, what did you learn about writing your book? My my first book, Black English Vernacular from Ain't to Your Mama, was nonfiction. That and my second book, Mom, Are We There Yet? I had a uh, traditional uh, uh, publishing. Uh, I didn't self-publish those. My next five books I self-published. But I wrote it because I had moved to the Midwest. I'm a native Texan. Mm. And I had moved to the Midwest. And even though we travel, most of my conversations have been with people who spoke like me. And so um, I thought that uh, Black English vernacular, Ebonics, all of that, the firestorm happened after I wrote my book. And I thought it was just kind of a regional uh, dialect. I did not realize it was an informal language that is uh, all across the United States because of, you know, the diaspora within our borders. And so when I got there and I'm meeting people from L.A. and the East Coast and NOLA, and we all have big mamas and we're all talking about nappy hair and ashy skin and, and using triple negatives. I ain't never, no, never loved a man like you, which is uh, <laughs> unique to Ebonics, the emphasis on vowels, you know, Detroit, the police, uh, those things that are unique to the grammar and, and syntax and pronunciation of uh, Ebonics. So I wrote, I was writing down words and putting what I call their standard English synonyms. It started out just for fun. And then I started sharing the list with friends and they were like, oh, this is, I love this. This is unique. This is interesting. And I kept making the list. And then I started to learn more about, like you said, you wrote the book and then learned about the business. I wrote that book and then began to learn more about, because I'm not an English major, I'm a biology major, but I learned more about language. And in the process, I learned more about writing when I decided to do a book with it instead of just something I shared with friends. Uh, it was it was easier to get a publisher then because it was a nonfiction book. It was a topic that was different. And about a year later, the thing happened with the bonics and I, I got to go all over the country. I was on BET and uh, several major news outlets. And that's when I decided that I also never, ever want to uh, write a book that is <laughs> a national controversy because I got so tired of arguing with people about whether or not Ebonics is legitimate. And uh, the thing I would say is you don't get to put a value on my culture. You don't get to deter- determine for me what is good or bad, whether it's my hair or my lips or the way I speak. It has uh, African roots and quite frankly, had we not been brought here in chains and not given the opportunity to learn to read and write, it might've turned out a little differently. But uh, so it it was great. I learned a lot about our culture. I learned a lot about uh, writing as I worked with the publisher of Rainbow Books there in Florida. And uh, I learned too that I would like to have a little more control over Mm -hmm 
the cover, over the price, over the content, which eventually, you know, two books later led to me self-publishing. So that was a long answer to your question. Not sure if I even answered your question, but that's what that's what it happened. <laughs> the, the last question I was going to ask you, uh, and, and that was a great segue, was about what have you noticed the difference between uh, being a self-publisher versus uh, 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 having a, a going through the other process? Because I, um, I know. I can't remember. I think my last 10 books are all Mm self-published. And and so there's a lot of myth with it. And then I found out, you know, if you have a a self-published, like I think maybe three or seven books you can get with the Library of Congress and become. So it's it's a lot that's involved. So for you, what did you see the, the difference in it, the pros and the cons? There's a lot in the pros and the cons uh, when I publish, when uh, Sisters Fed Up, my first novel, which you uh, referenced, uh, was in essence bestseller. When I published that uh, over 10 years ago, when was that published? 2006, because I just did the uh, standalone sequel, Never Close Your Heart, my seventh book, which was number one for African-American Christian fiction uh, in June of last year. June of this year, I published it in October. So now we're talking about, I'll I'll talk about what's good now. I don't have to go through Ingram and Baker and Taylor and, you know, these distributors and these gatekeepers to try to get them to distribute my book. I'm not carrying around cases of books, (laughs) you know, from bookstore to bookstore because they would do self-published authors on consignment. When I went to Barnes and Noble or Borders or whatever, they wouldn't just buy my book. So, so that was very difficult. Distribution marketing was more diff was, was difficult because we didn't have, you know, we didn't have all the digital uh, spaces that we could go to and advertise and, and promote our book directly to book clubs and to readers. And people were still kind of frowning on it, that it couldn't be, you know, if you had to self publish it, you couldn't get an agent, you couldn't get a publisher. Well, a lot of people couldn't uh, for systemic reasons. Uh, For regional reasons, it was a little easier if you worked in academics, if you were at a newspaper, if you were on the East Coast where all the major publishing uh, companies were. So when my book self-published and I was selling it for some ridiculous price of $17.95 or something to try to cover my cost and for it still to end up on multiple bestseller lists was nothing short of a miracle and the grace of God. Well, Mm -hmm. I just came out with my latest book. Never Close Your Heart, I was able to do go on CrowdSpring and find a, a contractor overseas to do the cover. Uh, actually, had a, a, a about 12, I think it was 12 different designers submit concepts for my cover instead of one guy. Uh, Keith Marion, when I did Symphony, gave me three concepts of this same cover. So I've got more options. It was cheaper to do this last year than to do Symphony. Uh, maybe I got somebody to do the layout, did it in PDF, Mobi, EPUB, the various format on Fiverr, uploaded it. Uh, of course, I had two or three different editors. Uh, Rhonda McKnight was one of my editors. If you know her, she's a, a best-selling uh, Christian fiction author. She's also a hell of an editor. And so I, I would match the quality, the content, um, the cover with with anyone's book out there. And, and I think the reaching number one on Amazon uh, proves that you can self-publish now and be competitive and um, keep more of the royalties. Now, we all know uh, Amazon and the other distributors are you know, one, you have to price your book at a certain price point, and then they're keeping their percentage depending on which uh, model you pick. So there is, there was the older way, there was a lot more uh, revenue for me, but this way there is less work, but I've got to increase volume to reach the same revenue. So, I mean, we all know why most authors still have a day job. <laughs> it's it's very difficult to go full-time doing that, but it's, so I can't just say 
you know, traditional publishing is this and self-publishing is that because it's a spectrum. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it depends on your type of book and what you're trying to do. But now, you know, Kawasaki, lots of uh, major, major, huge authors are self-publishing and, and no one blinks an eye at it. We're looking more for quality and stars, which is the great thing about us reviewing each other's work, uh, commenting on each other's work, supporting each other's work, because that's what readers look for now. How many stars, how many reviews? They don't really care who the publisher was for the most part, not for, for the types of books I'm writing. Okay. Well, I'm so glad that you gave a lot of information and I, and I, I was taking notes. So I just want you to know that. <laughs> so we really appreciate you. And we're so excited. And I just want to say uh, welcome to the audience. I see that we have um, Miss Nicole Harvey and we also have uh, uh, Miss Dina here and, and Michael is also here. So we really appreciate y'all coming in and supporting our queen this uh, afternoon and doing her thing. So I, uh, I'm excited. You go ahead, baby. It's on you now. You pick out what book you want to, and we're going to sit back and enjoy and listen. Well, thank you again. Is that is that Michael Gwen's iPhone? Yes. Uh, uh, Michael and I. Hey, brother. How are you? Good to see you. How about them boys? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Karen, Nicole, everyone for uh, joining my sister in Christ up in the corner. Uh, again, I, I, I appreciate your time and I'm not going to keep you a long time. I think I kind of gave my history in publishing there. Seven books. I love writing. Um, and it's, you know, you go to my website. I'm going to go ahead and give that in case somebody has to drop off. Dr. Mo Anderson, M-O-E anderson.com if you look at my uh, name on the on the zoom panel there you'll see it as well and you can see more about my podcast youtube channel and uh, books there so i've written three uh two novels i, I talked about uh, when a sister's fed up and never close your heart they're a series but stand alone and the book success is a side effect that you mentioned is the one I'm going to read from. I was going to read from my latest book, uh, Never Close Your Heart. But if you uh, guys are like me and most other people in the world, all of these various crises and, and burdens and ups and downs have uh, really been like an attack. It, it's felt like a spiritual attack. And it takes a lot. Of, I say all the time, I wake up fighting. I wake up like that when the alarm goes off. You know, I'm fighting racism. I'm fighting sexism. I'm fighting uh, regionalism. I'm fighting. I have a rare form of cancer for which there's treatment, but not a cure. I have to take a pill every day. I have to get MRIs. I just, just had one about a week ago, uh, multiple times a year. So all of that to say, there are a lot of things out there to be afraid of. There are a lot of things out there to be anxious about and worry about a lot of people, not just me dealing with chronic illness. And I share my story and my journey as a way of encouragement, but also uh, to be encouraged. I solicit your, your prayers and your support as I move forward. Uh, I mentioned to Stefania, I lost my dad August 30th. If you can see the wings and the cross behind me, on that cross, my colleagues gave me that is a, a photo of my dad uh, and the years that he lived. And, and I just like having that over my desk as I work every day. But um, even though I'm a professional optimist, that's what a motivational speaker is. I have challenges as well. And my message today is not so much about writing as it is about boundaries and self-care and encouraging you all to just take care of yourself. The, the thing I've noticed about writers, Ernestine, thanks for joining, is uh, that we tend to be compassionate, nurturing people because we're very detail uh, oriented in terms of our surroundings. We're constantly observing what's going on and we tend to like to reach out and, and help people a lot. And sometimes even that gets taken advantage of, but just keep being compassionate and strong and positive and writing, 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 channeling it all into our, our poetry and our books. And, and I think that is what sustains us. That's what sustains me. So instead of reading from a work of fiction, 
I am going to read from Success is a Side Effect, Leadership, Relationships, and Selective Amnesia. I'm going to read a couple of sections. You ain't Beyonce, as in Beyonce knows of uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce, Sean Carter, and Aya. This is an aside, but I watched The Heart of They Fall last night. Didn't realize that Jay-Z produced that, and that is quite one of the best Westerns I've ever seen in my life. And that's free, just like this reading, my review. So Beyonce is awesome, but girlfriend, guy friend, you ain't Beyonce, and you don't need to be. Media images, stereotypes, and backstabbing haters constantly reinforce the idea that we will never be thin enough, pretty enough, or smart enough to deserve respect. Well, they're wrong. So you're not part of a think tank or corporate executive or your perfect cousin who cured her kid's asthma with Vicks VapoRub. That's fine. They have their own destinies. They're doing what they were created to do. Your mission must always be to make the most of your talents. If you suck at addition and subtraction, you will never be dean of the math department at the local university. But learn to use the Excel program on your computer, and you can still get that spreadsheet done and turned in on time. Let's quit worrying about what we can't do or can't be. Do you. Do the best, most incredible, and phenomenal you imaginable. Look at your life as it is and as you want it to be. What is stopping you from maximizing your potential? Is it possible those lower level, instinctual, powerful needs we all have have not been met? If not, go back and attempt to fill in the blanks. We can reach great heights on the ladder to success, but we'll never know if it's our full potential. Just as a world-class sprinter who smokes a pack of cigarettes a day will never know if he might be even faster without the negative effects of tobacco. I suggest you do the Maslow, as in Maslow's pure hierarchy of needs. First, take care of your body. Without good health, you can't do anything. As I shared, I have a chronic illness, but I'm not giving in to that. So I don't eat fried food all day. I don't do a lot of sugar. I'm drinking water here. That didn't stop me from getting a chronic illness, but my diagnosis, uh, the the prognosis when I got it was five years of life, and it's been 10 years. So we, we can have an impact on the outcome of our life, on our journey. I firmly believe that. Pursue the education, job, or business opportunity that will allow you to live in a safe and stable environment. Don't harbor negativity. Make amends with the people you have having beef with, or at least extend the olive branch. Accept the fact that some people will never pay you back. Some people will never apologize. Go ahead, find someone special to love, meaning a closer than colleague relationship, someone you can confide in and ask for advice. If ever we, we it was honed in the, the necessity of being around people and their energy and their spirit. I think that was one of the big lessons of COVID-19 and stay at home. And lastly, quit comparing yourself to airbrushed cover models, Instagram influencers, whoever. You know they don't look like that. It's retouched, it's filtered, and they have to be hungry. Remember, food is a basic need. Your only competition in your mirror is in your mirror. Yet the woman in your mirror yesterday, are you better than that woman or man today? Be good to yourself and increased confidence will naturally follow. It's a logical progression. After that, the Milky Way is the limit. And from your new galactic heights, even the pyramids will seem small. Avoid the fear factor. When talking to people about goal setting, I often use an illustration taken from Lewis Carroll's famous book, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. You may recall there's a point where poor Alice is lost in the forest. Her new environment perplexes and frightens her. In the story, Alice asks the Cheshire cat, would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here? He responds, that depends a good deal on where you want to get to. Young Alice whispers timidly, I don't much care where. 
to which the cat replies, then it doesn't matter which way you go. But it does. It does matter which way you go. And the easy way is often not the best way. Before you proceed in a bold new direction, you must have a plan. Successful people have a plan for every area of their lives, health, careers, to their very souls. We have to know what we want to accomplish each day, each week, each month, and each year. We can modify the plan, but without a specific goal in mind, we'll always feel lost and anxious. Sometimes the difference between success and failure is not whom you know or what you know. It is simply what you fear. Millions of people are treading deep water in a pool of their melted dreams. No, it is not friends or family stopping most people from reaching their full potential or writing books as you have. It is their fear of failure. The mental transformation required to overcome fear is achieved by focusing on what you will gain, not on what you might lose. Fear magnifies the consequences of failure. Some people won't speak in public because they fear people will laugh at them, whisper while they're talking or fall asleep, log off. Maybe they will. Some people won't ask for help when they desperately need assistance with a project because the person they asked might say no and then send out an inner office memo telling everyone they're incompetent or lazy. That is possible, but unlikely. Fear always exaggerates our concerns if we allow it. Am I advising you to be intrepid without fear? No, I'm saying let's take fear in a healthy dose. Or as my Shiro, news anchor and cancer survivor Robin Roberts says, when fear knocks, let faith answer. An emergency exit or plan B should accompany every great, should accompany even great faith because wise women prepare for adverse results. Too much fear paralyzes you into having no plan at all, A or B. Successful people dwell on the possibilities, while others stubbornly obsess over the uncertainties of life. If we want to be better, we have to do more. And that means being uncomfortable, not a little bit, not some, but most of the time. That means taking risk. It means doing boring, horrid, difficult things you don't really want to do and doing them well. Yes, you will make mistakes. We can't become preoccupied with the failures. We learn the lessons of our mistakes, make corrections, and move on with life. Look forward. Our future is not in the past. Do you know the definition of a slave? <clears throat> there was a time when African Americans were considered to be three fifths of a person. Some people still think that way. When most people think of slavery, they think of shackles and the 11 million Africans who survived the journey to the new world in the filthy dark bellies of massive ships. They think of cotton plantations, the Underground Railroad, the Civil War. That is a poignant but narrow definition of slavery. According to Webster's, a slave is a person who is under the domination of some influence or person. Today, that person or influence may have another name. But if your partner always decides where you go, what you do, and when you leave, it's reasonable to infer, if that person doesn't have your best interest in, in heart, that you are a slave. If you're draining your bank account to single digits every month, purchasing new clothes, because some magazine says it's a must have for the upcoming fashion season, then by definition, you're a slave too. If you're skipping school, calling in for PTO, doing things that will prohibit you from getting that promotion because your friend says, let's go to Cancun this weekend. Any questions? When we allow our decisions to be dictated or influenced by other people without considering our own best interests or the repercussions on our family, then we have a slave mentality. And that bling bling is nothing but a rhinestone shackle chaining us to a future filled with debt, and anxiety. Everything matters. Each choice we make, person we encounter, and action we take affects our destiny. And the wrong choices actually change our destiny. When it's time to select your future, never choose fear. 
That's from Success is a Side Effect, Leadership, Relationships, and Selective Amnesia. And if you will go to my website at drmoanderson.com, a pop-up will come up with the cover. And if you sign up for my newsletter, you can get a free PDF, a free copy of the entire book, not a sample chapter, not the excerpt, but you can get a PDF of the book uh, for your pleasure and or to pass on, particularly to anyone going through a transition, uh, new to the job market. Um, and it's been very well reviewed, Kirkus and other corporate executives, but is is me sharing lessons learned from 33 years in, in a male dominated, uh, majority dominated profession, having a, a lot of involvement in the community, working with a lot of people. And I just wanted to pass that on and try to help someone cross the bridges that I've I've burned. Uh, the, the most popular chapter, the one that people reference the most is called Trust No One. And that is me, Dr. Mo Anderson. Thank you for your time and energy. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. If not, that's cool too. Mm, I think you're muted, Stefania. Looks like you're talking, but you're muted. And, um, but can you say uh, uh, the name of the book? Because at one point, uh, you also had zipped out when you were saying the name of the book again. So can you throw that, uh, tell us that real quick again? I sure can. And I'll try to get it to focus. Uh, success is a side effect. Leadership, relationships, and se selective amnesia. And again, you can get it for free. It, it is literally for sale on Amazon right now. Paperback, there's an audio book, and it's also an ebook. But connect with me, and it is yours today hmm. for the price of your effort. <laughs> you you uh, uh, just on the, the, uh, the excerpt, just that short piece that you did. You hit on a lot of things that I think that we go through uh, normal day to day um, routines. But one of the things that was that st uh, stuck struck out for me, even though when you did, like you said, you did the relationship. If somebody is picking your food or they doing this and this and this, you may not even think of that because sometimes we go, oh, that's so sweet. Oh, they and, and, and before you know, you get caught up and wrapped up. And then the other one, even with your um, with your uh, your job, with your career, understanding about how that make you are doing the one that's sabotaging your own your right. own by doing certain things that I can do so that you won't elevate yourself. So there was a lot of things that I I saw it, I heard in there that to me had that also geared into the area of um, um, mental illness, right. It, OK. And so I really think this is uh, I really appreciate you writing it. Um, I have one question before uh, we give it to the floor, because, you know, I'm I'm trying to stick here uh, because I wanted to know since, you know, you've written these books and you've done some uh, e-books as well. What do you think is. Um, I guess a quirk for you, an interesting writing quirk for you, do you have to have. Uh, is there a certain day that you write? Do you have to have candles going on? What is it that makes it easy for you to uh, go through that think process? What a great question. I have been interviewed hundreds of times, literally. I'm not making that up. And I don't think anyone's ever asked me that. Uh, I have to be, I guess it's a quirk. I'm a little bit. I ain't no all dentist star. You don't want a dentist who's not. So I actually clean before I write. I can't write in uh, if it's not organized in, in dysfunction. Disarray <laughs> is the word I'm trying to say. So uh, I usually, yeah, I'll, I'll clean. That's that'll be my intro to me uh, preparing to work, and then I need quiet. 
I, I needed really quiet. So it was hard. When my kids were living at home, I, I was stuffing my ears with everything I could find. But I, I functioned better in quiet. Those people who were sitting up in Starbucks and different places writing, my hat's off to them. But I get so distracted with the conversation and things moving around that I can't stay in the universe of my mind when when all that is happening. So that's all I can think of <laughs> right now. Oh, that was pretty cool. Thank you. Do you think of of this particular book is uh, would you consider that a uh, a self help guide? How do you classify the genre for that? Yeah, it's it's absolutely in professional development and uh, self help. That's how it it is, and it's cataloged. Um, the catalog and publication data. It's it's a self help. Okay. And I, I coach people on on the things that I'm discussing in the book is part of my services that I offer uh, publishing, self-publishing, coaching, speaking, uh, coaching, and then uh, transition and wellness coaching. So it's that, that was kind of an offshoot of, of that was, was starting that aspect of my coaching. Okay. And I know I lied uh, because I was, I was going to let them have the floor, but I have one more question and then I'm going to let somebody. Else. So it's, in the dentistry part, have you written a book about dentistry? Is that something that you've done or you plan on doing? Or I have a, um, I've written several articles in journals, in professional journals, and I've served as the uh, associate editor for a couple of uh, journals in my industry, Northwest and Northwest Dentistry, and, and I can't recall the name of the other one, The Beacon, but. Um, you see my setup behind me. I'm actually working on four sc- screens. I'm no longer in clinical practice. I'm a dental consultant now, so I review insurance claims and um, prior authorizations and so forth. With the change in my health, just the jumping from chair to chair was was too much to continue. But all of that to say is I'm sitting there doing dental stuff 10, 11 hours a day, and I don't want to talk about it anymore when I'm done. So when I wrote for the Star Telegram, it was lifestyle and family humor. None of my books have been about dentistry. Uh, I do. If you go on LinkedIn, you'll see I have some articles on there about wisdom teeth and other things, but it's not something I want to do a whole book about. Okay. All right. Well, I really appreciate you being a part of this and uh, being our feature today. Also uh, being a member of the Metro's Authors Group VIP we really appreciate you being here, and uh, I am opening the floor for Q&A. And if anyone have anything that they want to ask uh, Dr. Anderson, please feel free. Also, uh, if you don't want to ask a question, but you want to put it in chat, please let me know, and I'll read it from there. But the floor is open, and thank you again, Dr. Mo. Thank you. It's, it's a pleasure again to be a member. I appreciate uh, each and every one of you for your your time and your support. I've, I've been in uh, writing groups, but I hadn't been in an author's group before. And this, when I found out about you guys from uh, Laura Parker Castoro, who's a, a longtime mentor of my mentor, she was at your Burgers and Books. I might mm-hmm. not be getting the title right. About three years ago. And uh, kind of mad at you, Michael, that you hadn't told me about the group, but that's how I found out about it was that she invited me to come. And I was like, oh, my God, where have you guys been all my life? This is exactly what I need. Well, we appreciate you. I think Michael came. Um, look, I'm, I'm going to stand up for him. He came in probably a year later after behind you. So, oh, but OK, OK. We have had him the MC before. And so I. Uh, I saw, look, I was looking at him. I'm like, uh, he, he's worthy. Let's, you know, why he's not part of the group and stuff. So and he, at Michael is actually our uh, public relations president right now doing social media and PR together. So he's doing uh, a good job of it too. Thank you. And, uh, but anybody have any questions? Ooh, look, Miss Rose cooking something. Ooh, <laughs> I have a I question. I see that. Yes. I started listening. My family's coming over for dinner. Oh, nice. Okay, let me get started. Listen while I bake. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you. Okay, somebody said they had a I question. have a question. This is Karen. I have a question. I didn't see where I could ask a question in the chat, but which book is it that we're reviewing and purchasing? 
I don't believe they I've been selected for the author's box yet. Um, so I'll, I'll have to. Okay. No, miss. OK, so let me interject on that. When we have even when we have our author's features, too, I mean, even though we have our author's box. Also, uh, this is an opportunity if we, you know, if you would like to go and also purchase your book. So I think that's what Miss Karen is. Oh, asking. I see. Yeah. All right. Which book is? Well, I, if you like uh, fiction, uh, Karen, then I would suggest my uh, latest book, Never Close Your Heart. You can see the cover over my shoulder. And I do write in my uh, given name, which is Monica F. Anderson. If you put in Dr. Mo Anderson in Amazon, it'll come up anyway. But uh, all of my books there in the anthologies I've written in are either under uh, Monica F. Anderson or Monica Frazier Anderson. But that would be my recommendation to start with that. Or if you want to do, I mean, I think they're only $2.99, $3.99 digitally. If you want to do the set, then I would go with Never Close Your Heart and When a Sister's Fed Up. If you uh, prefer nonfiction, then the book I just read from Success is a, is a Side Effect. Uh, you can get for free, or if you want the uh, audio book or a printed copy, you can get it on Amazon as well. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Anybody else? Have Anyone else? Publishing questions, dental questions. I will answer dental questions. I'm just not writing a book about it. Uh, <laughs> I have a I have a comment that I, I that you did. I want to talk about that you did. Uh, uh, and I thought that was really cool. Do you remember when you you was uh, getting your illustration, your cover for your books and you gave mm -hmm. you put out there? I thought that was pretty cool to give people a, 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 a choice of saying, hey, this cover, this cover, this cover. So how did that? I mean, and I mean, I know you picked it, but how did how, how did you feel about that? Or once you start seeing any. A uh, feedback or, or or was it? I mean, I know it had to be exciting or you, you know what that what was that feel about when you did that? You know, I I uh, I'm always looking for new ideas, and I I read a lot about our industry, and I listen to YouTube talks. I, I go on book club meetings and so forth. And like I said, in the past, when I did Symphony, I, I would find a cover designer and they would do some concepts for me, but they kind of looked the same, maybe just a little bit different here and there. And I learned about CrowdSpring from the book Ape, APE, author, publisher, entrepreneur. Excellent, excellent book as I was preparing to do my most recent book because there had been a few years and I wanted to know, you know, what's going on? Uh, what's the best way to go about printing, marketing, what's changed in the industry? And they mentioned in that book, CrowdSpring. And they have, it's like Fiverr, if you've used Fiverr, but these people are more around coming up with graphics and logos and book covers. And you literally put your project up, put a synopsis of the book, you know, describe your characters, if, however you want to. And then they, all of these graphic designers will submit concepts and it, and you give them feedback and they modify it. And uh, honestly, they didn't read it all at first because I got back a bunch of white couples uh, even though I had clearly described <laughs> my main character and her daughter and her grandson. But as you give them feedback, they come back with different versions. And so I narrowed it down from about 12 to the six and you can do focus group. But, but I thought I've got a few thousand people on Facebook between my different uh social media between Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, I can get the collective wisdom. And so that was, I hadn't seen anyone do that before, but I took the top six and I put them on there and I was like, give me feedback. And I really was just looking for feedback for the cover, but it made the pre-orders go through the roof. And I, I did the pre-orders for 99 cent. I hadn't seen anyone else do that, but, um, I'm always trying to take things to the next level. And I'm not saying it hadn't been, hadn't been done, but I hadn't seen anyone do that. And at this point, I was trying to get, you know, get buy-in and get recognition more than I was. You know, I, I wanted the volume more than I wanted 
okay, I'm going to charge $5.99, $7.99, $12.99 for this as much as I can get. And it really, it worked itself out. And to be honest, what the one that was finally selected, we went from the top six to the top three. And if you saw it, you saw that people were just commenting and giving feedback. And I did. There was, for example, on this cover, there was a church in this corner right here with a, you could see the top of the church and it had a cross on it. Well, someone said, you know, looking at that as a small thumbnail, that looks like a clan hood with the cross burning behind it. I didn't see that. Probably wouldn't have seen that until somebody was offended by it. I had that removed. There were people didn't like the font. They couldn't read it. I had that changed. There were different images. And so all of that feedback helped make what I think is art. I, I sell it in my Shopify store now because it was so uh, amazing to me. And the final one that was chosen was not my number one choice. But I went with what the people chose because, I mean, I asked for their opinion. It wouldn't be fair not to. It was my this was my second choice. So my first choice was this one. This is not the original cover of when a sister sped up. Covers were different then. Back in 2006, we were doing kind of the Charles Bibbs artwork thing. So it had a different cover. So after I selected this one, and you only pay the person that you pick. That's what's so insane about it. They retain their rights to the other concepts. You can't use them. But the one that you pick, you get the, you know, I paid for it 200 and something dollars in, in this cover some years before cost me 500 and I, I don't mind sharing what stuff costs, but that's a really good price for a very high quality uh, cover in the layers and the format that I needed to upload it. I didn't have to send it to somebody else. I had all the rights and then CrowdSpring is kind of over it. So if you have any problems with an individual, it's not like me dealing with an individual that is not accountable to anyone. And so the Number two choice was actually my number one. So I went back and approached the person who designed this. And I said, well, I want yours too. And I paid her for this. I think she's in Switzerland. Uh, I want to say this person was in uh, Pakistan. And I think she was in Switzerland. And she was like, yeah, so you can do separate deals. And I got this and updated the cover. Didn't change the content, but I updated the cover. And now... You know, they kind of go together better uh, as a series. And I got people feel like, you know, when they got the book that, hey, I helped choose that cover. You know, they felt some ownership there. And I think I got more support and retweets and shares from that process than anything else I've done in trying to get people engaged with me publishing a new new book. It wasn't just likes. They When they start commenting and sharing, you know, they, they really have bought in. And uh, it was exciting, but it was just thinking and praying and and trying to see what can I do to get get these people's attention when there's so many other things that are are pulling on them for their time and attention. I really appreciate that because I remember mine was number two. <laughs> so that was the girl that was her face was looking this way yes. and it's like. Uh, uh, the sun and a field in the back. So yeah, I was like, oh, did you pick one? Yeah. That was a but beautiful the, one too. Yeah, it was. All of them was very colorful and pretty. And then you know they had the one that was uh, uh, the purple one. They had the kind of purple in the background. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I thought that was pretty nice. But it's exciting just to try to figure out different ways to, like you say, engage people. Uh, to be prepared for your book. And uh, 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 I just thought that was just fabulous doing that, having someone to help you figure out how your cover was. So it's been great. Did anybody else have any more questions? Okay, so Dr. Mo, I just wanted to say something. Go ahead, Miss Ernestine. Oh, yeah, I uh, really enjoyed your reading. Uh, what Thank is you. the name of that book now? The nonfiction piece you read from? Yes. Beyonce. Yes. She, what's the, it, what's the name asking, of it? The name of it is. I'm sorry. I, it's, I'm kind of cutting in and out here. Is success is a side effect. If okay. someone could drop that in the chat for me, um, okay. I'm a little far from my keyboard. But is success is a side effect? 
And my web, website is drmoanderson.com. And all of my books are on there with uh, excerpts and links and uh, reviews. But the website. I'm going to check that out. And I'll put it on my list. I've been recommending a book a week since quarantine. Wow. That's awesome. So Thank you. I'm up to 80 something now. And it keeps me reading. <laughs> that's impressive. That's really good. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Okay. You take care. And I'll you it, the, uh, I put the uh, website in there uh, when we first came on. So if y'all just go through the chat, you can see that and, and click on her link. And so, Dr. Mo, as we come in, uh, to a close, one of the things that we do at the end, it, we want you to uh, give us a word, affirmation, the motivation, something that's that you uh, that helps you. Uh, or something that 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 uh, a quote from your book or anything. Hmm. You know what what you said one already, which is that God doesn't waste wounds. So I do look. Yeah. Um, I try to look more. I, I try to ask myself, not you know, why did this happen to me, but rather what what am I to learn from this? How do I grow from this? So you covered that already, that which is my my quote. Uh, but the other one is from Gandhi, and um, he said. Don't let anyone walk through your mind with dirty feet. Ooh. And at such a time as this, when there's so much negativity in the news, when in, in our news feeds on social media, even uh, families are becoming polarized and divided uh, as it was prophesied in the Bible, it, it is easy for people to get into your mental space. I'm big on, on maintaining your mental health and emotional wellness to the best of your ability. And it, we have to put up boundaries. We have to, uh, some people, we have to love from a distance. I, I don't hate anyone, but they're people I love from a distance rather than letting them destroy me up close. And um, that that's what... You know, that's what I remind myself of when I encounter uh, people who are, are angry and, and negative and just mean spirited. And, and many times I recognize it has nothing to do with me. They are going through difficult times. They come from difficult backgrounds. Uh, you don't know what's going on in somebody's life. But I do have the choice of not allowing you to infect me with whatever is wrong with you. Mm. That's great. That was, I'm going to remember that. Don't let nobody walk through your mind with dirty feet. That's awesome, Dr. Mo. We sure appreciate you. And uh, 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 you've been a wonderful feature and so glad because that last time I saw you was at Booksburg and more. And I haven't seen yeah. you. I just figured, you know, we got all these wonderful authors in our group and some of us really don't know one another yet and who's who. And, and, uh, uh, one of, to me, one of the perks is being able to, if you're looking for uh, uh, someone that, you know, have a podcast or you're looking for someone that's been in the trenches with didn't know how to do Amazon or, or self-publish, you have all these different resources collectively in our group to pull upon. So I already, always appreciate that we that we have uh, editors and, and I'm, I'm hoping we're going to get some illustrators uh, in, in our group as well. So I'm always looking and, and trying to pull somebody in and, you know, and I think our group is a great group so that we can, you know, get our uh, membership. I'm looking forward to 22, uh, with more innovative things. We have our web mistress, uh, on the call, Mr. Cole Harvey, and she has been working on our, uh, website diligently. Y'all can follow us on Facebook under Metro's Authors Group. And also on my Instagram account with the same name. And um, I don't know if Miss Karen is uh, received my message, but she's our membership chair. And so we usually try to, you know, go welcome to membership. So, uh, but uh, at this time, you, you, you can find us, email us if anybody interested in joining, or just email us at Metro's Authors Group at gmail.com. And Miss Karen will send you some information. And I'm so excited, Monica. This is fine. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Michael say, Dr. Mo books always bites. 
<laughs> All right, Michael. We go back a long ways till he's a, a good, good brother. I appreciate you, Michael. No, it, yeah, it's been uh, so exciting to have you here. And if any anybody else have anything uh, else, we're getting ready to close down. But once again, Dr. Mo, we really appreciate you being here. Thank you. All. And I want to do a special shout out to Dana. She's just a wonderful woman of God, good prayer warrior. She's been supportive of me. And uh, I see you there smiling, sis. I just want to. Yeah, I've been perusing your website while y'all talking. I haven't seen, <laughs> seen everything. And, oh, uh, yeah, I've been perusing while y'all talking. Thank yeah. you, Stefania. Thank you for your, your wonderful leadership, for, for your time, for all the innovations and stuff. It's a great group. And uh, let's just keep it going and keep supporting each other. God bless. Thank you, everyone, so much.